Hello and welcome to the show. I'm back on Homebrew Vehicle Sandbox. I'm going to be trying to build some some various vehicles. This was my first attempt a little while ago, kind of a monster truck slash buggy style -y of thing. Uh, this game is effectively, imagine Gary's mod designed for vehicle building. Okay, you get the idea, you build the chassis, uh, sort of these, these wireframe chassis, and you put in engines and suspension and wheels and so on, and then, then you get a vehicle out of it uh, at the end. Now, I'm not the greatest when it comes to sort of artistic -y, designy stuff, so I thought for my first kind of, of vehicle build, I was going to go for a semi truck. I was going to base it design on, sort of on like the old Peterbilt style American trucks, like the long nose trucks. I figured that was quite an easy, an easier shape for me to to get started on. So the first thing uh, to build, or well, I decided to start with the the wheel arches at the front. Now these are a little bit, a little bit of a faff to do. I had to make custom pipes for for this. Unfortunately, I can't find a way, I don't think there is a way at the moment, to change sort of like the shallowness of, of, of these arches or, or the height of the arches. So to get this kind of size that I wanted to, this was, that was the shape that they were going to have to be. Uh, it's perhaps a little bit too too large, but uh, that, that's the best that I could really do with the wheel arch. So I copied it over the other side. I experimented a little while trying to decide on the, the width of the truck. If you like, it went through a few uh, iterations before I was finally happy with uh, with this particular width. To do kind of like the bonnet, I used, I think it was a Curve 3 pipe, a, a standard one, uh, if you like, to kind of do the sides of it. And then I made some sort of custom diagonal things for the windscreen again, uh, making sure I was happy with kind of like the, the roof the roof height uh, of the truck. Yeah, the, I mean, there's only so much that, that I can do on here. I'm quite I'm quite pleased with the way that the Curve things look. Uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to the to the bonnet, yeah, it it, it, it all kind of it all kind of uh, fits together. I then carried on uh, adding on pipes to work down the sides of the truck. Now I had initially had an idea of using sort of custom side panels here. It's just just kind of sort of a, a bit of a, a bit of a mashup of framework of just some pipes sort of <laughs> sort of stuck together in in a, in 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 a way. It works. It, it does the job. I had wanted to use uh, these these big side panels. The problem was is that the game the game gets a little bit unhappy. So I made up all of these uh, ready to sort of fit into spaces. Uh, but when I started filling the truck up with them, the game not I guess not quite designed for <laughs> for that many cubes, and we went down to about three frames a second. So I figured, no, nah, let's not risk crashing the entire game. Uh, I promptly got rid of them. So yeah, we're, it's going to be kind of a framework see-through truck. I can't put in the panels without the game getting very. I mean, this is a huge vehicle as well. I mean, you could probably get away with it on a smaller vehicle uh, using the blocks to make panels, but because of the size of this truck, it, it just wasn't happy with it. Uh, we, we come around to the back and again using the same design uh, for the wheel arches. There's no copy and paste as far as I could tell so I had to keep making all of these manually and trying to make sure, I think that for a while I had one wheel arch that was bigger than the rest of them. It took me ages to realise why something wasn't quite lining up because I put one too many of the sort of the, the, the U-shaped pipes. Yeah, <laughs> got to make sure you keep track of all of that stuff. Uh, again, fairly simple framework at the back as well. Uh, then we come to sticking on the sort of the wheel, the wheel assembly, suspension, and so on. Now I realised at this stage I'd messed up a little bit. As you can see, there isn't actually a middle point for me to put the wheels on. Might have made a small mistake on this one, uh, and by the time I realised that I'd messed that up, I couldn't really change it without starting completely over again. So uh, yeah, the wheels are not quite in the middle. Of the yeah, it's not ideal. Uh, <laughs> I learned quite a lot though. Learned quite a lot while while building this truck. You got to make sure that uh, <laughs> you check for stuff like that. Uh, we come to the the engines next. Now there are I think there are two sorts of well, it's two sorts of petrol engine. There's a few jets and that kind of thing. But uh, you have these V sixes and you have little quad bike engines. We don't have any large sort of truck engines or, or larger engines at this moment in time. This game's still very much uh, in development. I decided I want some some decent power in the truck. I mean, after all, it's a big old vehicle. I opted for four engines, which is, you know, it should be it should be a, a, a sizable amount of power. And I mean, there's plenty of space in the front to uh, to add those in. And then there's a few more sort of a finer details. We've got some fuel tanks. I figured we'll go for two of the larger fuel tanks. I mean, four engines are going to be quite thirsty, so two large fuel tanks should be more than enough 
to keep it going for a while. We've got a driver's seat in there, and there's still plenty of space. I could add other seats if, if, if was needed. There's plenty of space, in fact, for fuel tanks lower down if I wanted. I could probably fit four of the large fuel tanks if, if I so wanted to uh, in the lower area. It comes to adding on the, the actual wheels. This is where the, the wheel arches are perhaps a, a tiny bit. Of, or in fact, this is where I position the wheel in the, in the wheel arches. is a tiny bit of a problem. Uh, I was going to go for these road huge tyres, but they do look a little bit small in the wheel arches. So I, I experimented with using perhaps these these dirt ones. Okay, I know this isn't going to be an off-road vehicle as such. But I figured, you know, they, they kind of fitted in the wheel arches a little bit better. But as you can see... Uh, they do slightly sort of rub on the top of the the arch. Now, I wasn't sure. Sometimes games let you get away with this. Like the, the it doesn't matter about the collisions with the wheels and sort of the frame of the vehicle. Some some creator games will let you get away with that. I wasn't sure if uh, if this one would. So I went around and changed all the wheels because these look perhaps uh, a, t a tiny bit better sort of sized for the wheel arches. Uh, however, I would learn later on that it doesn't work, so you'll see I've reverted back to the road tyres uh, at some point. Yeah, if, if the wheels are touching uh, on the on the frame, it, it doesn't work. I then came to linking everything up. Got to make sure, remember, to do uh, all of this right. You can see at the start there, I was initially going for a... Uh, perhaps a more, a more standard uh, or, or a standard design for a truck. So the rear four wheels were going to be powered, and the front wheels were going to do the steering, making sure to link the engine up to the actual controller, i.e. the seat. I didn't want to experiment. Or I didn't really know what I was doing with four wheel steering or, or multiple wheel steering. I should say. I I shoot. Or I, I'm fairly sure some trucks have it. I'm not sure all do. So I figured I'll just stick with conventional. Have the front wheels do the steering. And we'll have the rear wheels do sort of the driving. Uh, for, for this, for my first sort of fairly sensible, serious-ish build, I figured I don't want to get too <laughs> too carried away with faffing around with uh, with all sorts of of fancy steering. So yeah, that's what uh, that, that's what I opted for. Again, making sure to link the fuel tanks up to the engines. On the, I think the first sort of time I was playing this game and building stuff. I, I built something and it took me a good half an hour to figure out why on earth it wasn't going anywhere because I'd forgot to link the fuel tanks to the engine. So, yeah, <laughs> got to make sure you do uh, all of the uh, all of the little things like that. The final thing to test was make sure everything was working. Uh, make sure that you've set, opted to like the front wheels to, to be used as can steer and make sure you tell the left wheels that they are left wheels. And sure enough, as you can see, the, the front thing uh, is working. However, you will notice that the wheels, I didn't think the wheels were turning very much. To be steering a great big truck, they didn't really seem to have very much steering. So we go uh, into the options, there's something called a max angle, uh, and I decided, or I came to the conclusion, that's to do with how much the wheels will turn, like the maximum steering angle of the wheels. So I set it up to 20 uh, instead of 10, and then they steer an awful lot better. Unfortunately, the, the controls for the camera is the same as the steering at the moment, so it's a little bit hard to judge because the camera's always moving around while you're testing the steering. But it looked a lot better, and I figured that would give me uh, sort of the best opportunity, if you like, of having this truck to kind of handle fairly well. I mean, <laughs> it's a great big truck. I wasn't expecting it to be a supercar, but, uh, you know, you want it to drive quite nicely. And uh, and here we go with the, the, the finished thing out in the world. You see, I've changed the wheels back. At the front, it is slight. I messed up slightly uh, with some of the pipes. It's to do with the way that the pipes and the cubes at the end of the pipes intersect with each other, and I built it a little bit skew whiff at the front, and I couldn't change it uh, without <laughs> messing everything up. So, yeah, the, 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 the front frame is just slightly uh, <laughs> slightly skew whiff, but uh, it, it's okay. It, it, it works. Um, so, yeah, it was off to give the truck a test drive. I quickly realised that it wasn't quite happy. Something wasn't quite right with uh, with the way the truck was driving the steering wasn't really it was kind of very very unresponsive and the power delivery wasn't really that wasn't really wasn't really there uh, as we come down a hill we get a little bit twitchy and we go over sort of a, a bump the truck manages to lift up and in true fail race fashion i've managed to roll it within sort of 30 seconds of uh, <laughs> of setting up yeah, a little bit of problem uh, with the handling. It was a weird one to drive. I, it just didn't feel. It didn't feel right. Uh, now I wasn't sure quite what this. It what what the problem was was with it. Oh, God damn, I can speak honestly. Um, so yeah, I was I was a little bit confused uh, by the truck, but I did have sort of an idea of how how might fix it. Went back into the editor 
and figured perhaps the easiest solution would to try making it six-wheel drive, have, have power going to the front wheels as well. Now, I'm thinking that perhaps because this vehicle is so very long and the terrain that we're driving on is, let's face it, not exactly smooth tarmac, and, I mean, we've got, well, we have got sort of small suspension movements in this. It's not sort of big, fancy, complex suspension. I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps, as it was going over the bumps, sort of wheels were lifting up into the air uh, and power wasn't being delivered very well, or the steering was struggling. Uh, so, yeah, by having such a long wheelbase, I was thinking that perhaps could be, could, could be what was causing the problem. Uh, so I finished, I finished up all of, the, all of the linking thing, made sure to save all the changes, uh, put it back out uh, into the world. And by making it all-wheel drive, things were an awful lot better. The truck now drove much more like a vehicle. It had decent power. Well, I switched the engine on, of course. We had decent power delivery. Uh, we, we weren't just kind of spinning the wheels constantly. And we actually had steering. It felt a lot better to drive. Now, this is a pretty quick truck with, a, <laughs> with, with these four engines on here. We're up to 250 kilometers an hour. It's about 150, 155 miles an hour, which is pretty damn quick. For a, for a big old semi-truck. However, you will notice that uh, we have a similar problem with this as we did with the monster buggy thing, in that when it goes around corners, we have some grip roll. Now, it's not as bad as the monster buggy. I think this is perhaps a little bit wider. Although, then again, I'm not sure. I mean, the wheels on the, on the monster buggy are sort of huge, great big things that stick out the side of the truck. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm not sure. Perhaps it is a little bit wider. I mean, I would expect this to be slightly more unstable. It is quite a tall vehicle. In all honesty, it's quite a tall truck. Um, so we do have a, a small problem with grip roll. It's a lot more drivable than the damn monster buggy. It steers very nicely up until the point where it falls over. Uh, and yeah, I was I was quite pleased with this, in all honesty. Aside from the falling over, uh, yeah, it was... It, it drove very well. It drove far better than my first creation. And yeah, I mean, it was it was quite a lot of speed uh, as well for for a truck. But I did want to have a go, see if I could perhaps figure out a way of stop making it fall over. After I got myself out of the cabin, I got <laughs> I did think of this when it came to the design. You do kind of slightly get stuck if you're not careful. You have to jump on the seat, and then you jump out of the truck. There we go. And then the truck slides down the hill. It's obviously very light as I can push it around with the person. When <laughs> if you run into it, you can push these. I'm not sure you could do that with a truck to be honest. Uh, yeah, the, the <laughs> sliding down the hill. So I experimented with it a little while and finally came up with a way of stopping the vehicles from grip rolling. When you go into like, the little wheel hub bit, uh, along with the, with the max angle thing that I changed earlier, there is another setting called sideways grip. Uh, now, you, this is uh, the fault uh, uh, being at one. That was what you saw me driving with in the first time. Now, I played around with various values for this. Now, of course, you can't make it too low. You still do need grip to be able to turn corners and, and, and drive the vehicle in general. I, after much experimenting, settled with 0 0.3 as a good compromise. I think when I drove it at 0 0.5, it was still possible to make the truck grip roll. It was it was nowhere near as bad, of course, but you could still have the vehicle grip roll a, a little bit. And I wanted to try and get rid of that. I mean, we're not... Uh, okay, maybe if you took a corner at 155 in a truck, you would fall over, perhaps. Um, <laughs> but I, I wanted to kind of have this, have this handle, handle fairly sensibly. And at 0.3, it really worked for this vehicle. Now, that value will probably depend... Uh, like, We've got, we've got less grip in general, so you could experiment with different vehicles and you'd have kind of a different outcome. At 0.3 with this truck, it's about right. It slides around uh, a bit. I was trying to use the handbrake there. I don't know, there might be a way, but the handbrake at the moment, I think, seems to lock up all the wheels. I'm not sure if there is a setting to change that to lock up just the rear ones. So yeah, trying to do handbrake turns it doesn't really work um, at this stage. But now I have the have the grip, the grip kind of setting uh, sorted. Like it handles an awful, awful lot better. It handles kind of like how I would expect it to, uh, in all honesty. We have plenty of grip, the steering sort of around corners. We can we can we can take these corners at, at 150 miles an hour or whatever, and we still have we still have enough steering and grip to make the corners. I mean the back of the truck will slide around. You can even get sort of kind of drifting. Well, I'd say drifting. You can kind of slide it a little bit uh, around. It's quite a good, I think it's quite a good, good sort of compromise that, uh, that, I, that I sorted out 
for for the for the levels of grip. Yeah, it's now it's now it's a lovely vehicle to drive. You can you can get it around the corners. May have got a little bit <laughs> carried away. Thank God there was no collisions with the trees at this precise moment in time. Uh, yeah, magic magic trees quite useful really. Um, now it's now it's a very good truck to drive to be honest. One of my favourite vehicles that uh, <laughs> I've messed about with on here. I, I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a lovely a lovely vehicle. Handles handles very well. Kind of handles sort of how how you would expect it to. And then I spy a jump, and of course you can't resist taking a jump when you're in a 150 mile an hour truck. So uh, yeah, it even soars through the air. Look at that, lovely and smoothly. A little bit bumpy on the landing, but um, yeah, the truck was functioning. I re <laughs> I was really quite pleased. I I've managed to fix all of the all of the things with the with the handling, so it now drives very nicely. Uh, it has plenty plenty of power from the uh, from the four engines. So we've got a decent amount of speed. Okay, maybe a little bit too much speed. Perhaps three engines would be uh, suitable. Braking is something I haven't quite figured out yet. We do, we do struggle a little bit at getting stopped. Haven't figured out the brakes quite. There, there are some settings that I'll have to play about with a hell of a lot more to uh, to, to fully understand them. But uh, the truck, I was really pleased with this one. It turned out a lot better than I could have ever expected. It looks the part. I will admit the front is slightly, slightly messed up, and I did kind of screw up the wheels a little bit uh, with the placement. But for a first kind of, kind of proper, sensible-ish build, I was really pleased with it. I, it, it works. It drives very nicely. It looks the part. Uh, yeah, there we go. I built a semi truck, and it, it does all of the things it is, it is supposed to do. Yeah, really, really, really quite pleased uh, with, with this particular vehicle. For my next build, I'm going to leave it up to you guys uh, for a vote in the comment section as to what I try and uh, tackle next. Either I will have a go at trying to sort of recreate a, I think like a Volvo 850 estate, that sort of, of style of car. I think I could, I think I can manage something like that. It's quite, it's a fairly simple shape that I think I, can, I think my my designy artistic skills can just about get away with. Or I might have a go at building some rocket-powered dragster style thing. So let me know in the comments what you would like to see me tackle next. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye. Thank you.